The Trials of Life took three and a half years to make. It spans 45 countries. It cost about 15 million New Zealand dollars. The work of Sir David Attenborough needs no introduction in New Zealand, but one of the most remarkable episodes of the present series is due to play this coming Sunday night. It's an episode that attracted an immense audience when it played in Britain. In it, killer whales surge up onto a beach abundant with young sea lions. To get off the beach, the killer has to thrash its body. No other whale deliberately beaches itself in this way or has perfected this method of getting back to the sea. Well, Sir David Attenborough himself is with us in New Zealand. He's with us in the studio. There must have been a great deal of risk in that for the people doing it, for the people filming yeah, it. Yeah, Mike Degree, Paul Atkins, two Americans, cameramen. Uh, I actually thought they were out of their mind, to be truthful, because uh, that whale, those whales were coming up on the beach, but they uh, were not content just to take that. They said, look, we've got to get in the water with them. Now, you know, a man in a wetsuit, black, rubber, shiny rubber, it looks jolly like a sea lion to me. Um, but they, 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 <laughs> they call it kind of death wish. Or they're driven, and I expect you are in, in many ways with regards wildlife. Are you driven? I, th I think that's putting it a bit dramatically. I have a very nice time uh, and uh, I have very privileged time. I see amazing things, things that you would give your right arm to see really. I mean, and all I have to do is sit at home uh, right in my study and I think would I like to see killer whales on Patagonia? So I put a uh, long shot, killer whale approaches beach and the rater appears round boulder and I've got a ticket to the killer whales. I take it, yes, and the, the, the series cost about 15 million New Zealand. Is it, is, it, is it easier these days getting that kind of money to make wildlife series? Um, I don't know, because I don't really get it. Uh, I mean, I put up the idea and I wait until they say either yes or no. Um, it, we, it is very fortunate that natural history films are catching on worldwide. They used not to be so. Uh, America, for example, didn't particularly care about natural history films of any seriousness. Uh, until about 10 years ago, but now uh, they do big business. Is it easier technically, technologically, to make them? I mean, what are some of the advances that, that, that might make it easier? The major days? advance is, is that cameras have got more sensitive, so you can film in lower light levels. Uh, when I started making natural history films, it's difficult to believe, but, but you couldn't have film in a, in a rainforest at all. It was too dark. If you, wanted to, if you wanted to film in a rainforest, you had to cut the forest down and let the sun in. Uh, now, with electronic cameras in particular, you can film in light and see more than you can see with the human eye. Are we losing a lot? I mean, you, you speak of the rainforest and the, the rainforest in Brazil are very much, the jungles in Brazil are very much under discussion. How much of life is being lost, do you think, that we don't really know about? Well, undoubtedly we've lost huge areas. There can't be any question about that. Um, on the other hand, um, when I fly over South America, when I fly over down here, when I come over even North America, you know, there are vast areas, thank God, of, of, country, of land which we haven't yet infected or destroyed. But we are going the right way to do it, and I'm sure that uh, conservation is one of the crucial issues of this next century. Are you ever horrified by nature? I mean, the killer whales with the, with the, with the sea lion youngsters. I don't think you should be horrified. You can equally you can be terrified. Uh, that's it, because it can be dangerous. But I don't think you ought to be horrified. Uh, you ought to be. You can be fascinated. Uh, but the kind of horror is is a human subjective thing. And you ought to be saying, look, that's what it is. That that's the way it is. The killer whales, of course, is in the program coming up on uh, Sunday night. There is another piece about uh, some chimpanzees on a hunt in this program coming Sunday. What's the background to this before we go to it? People used to think that chimpanzees lived entirely on nuts and fruit. 
uh, one Swiss scientist working for 10 years every day in the forest following a troop of chimpanzees until they came to learn to accept him discovered otherwise. He discovered that they were hunters and he allowed us to go with him. Well, let's have a look at it. This is um, the no, chimpanzees. So they're all in position. The driver's gone them up, the blockers have gone up, and now the one who's going to make the ambush and close the ring, he's gone up too. The colobus will be very lucky if they escape now. One. The hunters are tearing it apart. Everyone, the hunters in the trees and the spectators on the ground, are screaming with excitement. What does that tell us too about um, the social organisation of the chimpanzees and the way they work together? They are the most, uh, they have the most complex teamwork of any animal we know. Um, by that, I'm, by teamwork, I mean a, a team in which individuals have their own, own role to play and uh, always play that role. Uh, lions used to be thought of as, as team hunters, that they were said to um, uh, encircle wildebeest and then lay in ambush and then w deliberately startle one out. But the fact of the matter is that it doesn't work that way. They, the lions do move that way, but what triggers them, it isn't one particular lioness who always does the ambushing or who always does the frightening. But amongst the chimps, that is always the case. Do, 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 don't you ever want to stop them, though, and, and to step in and impose some kind of human value and say, stop, that this is cruel? Uh, you can't stop chimpanzees hunting. Uh, <laughs> I mean, they would have torn you apart. I mean, they really would. Are some animals noble, do you think? No, I don't think so. Uh, I think uh, we human beings put our subjective emotions onto animals. We say the lion sitting there profiled against the sky is noble. He's asleep. Is this the last big series then from David Attenborough? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't think I'll make another series like that. Uh, that was just an extraordinary series and uh, I've got to do something different. It's very uncomfortable. You seem to be sweating, perspiring, intensely <laughs> involved there. <laughs> yes, well, yeah, we had to run every day for 12 hours for 10 days or so. What, to train for it or to follow the chimps? No, to follow the chimps. In the old days, was it more uncomfortable than it is now? Mm, yes, but more fun. I mean, because in the old days you went away for three months with a camera and a cameraman and you lived with the Dykes in central Borneo and you came back three months later with some rather indifferent film. These days it's much more efficient. And of course your whole series in a book called The Trials of Life, which you are, I'm sure, anxious to speak about <laughs> as, you, as, you, as you move about the country, Sir David. That's right. <laughs> Sir David Attenborough, thank you for joining us. Pleasure.